Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to see how to execute HTTP requests in a React application. We're going to be doing this with React hooks as well as React components, and we're going to see this two different ways. So we're going to see this using the fetch command in JavaScript as well as a third-party library called Axios. So you'll notice that on my screen I am showing HTTP bin.org. We're going to be using this as our API endpoint. So we're not going to be worrying about creating our own API endpoint. That's a lot of work that's kind of out of the scope of this particular example. So basically, if you've never seen HTTP bin.org before, it's a mock endpoint where anything you throw at it, it basically comes back to you. So we're going to be sending off various payloads and query variables, things like that. And it's just going to send it right back to us. And we're going to use that information in our application. So if I go to my editor, uh, you'll notice that I do have a new React project created. This is a very vanilla project. All I've done was run create React app. The reason why I didn't want to show that step is because it takes a long time to run and we don't need to wait around for that. So let's go into the source directory and open up the app.js file. This is where we're going to be doing all of our code editing uh, for this particular example. I'm going to start things off by clearing out some of the code, not all of it, um, that already was given to us. So basically all I want is the image to show. I'm also going to clean up the tabs uh, because I use four spaces for tabs and I think uh, that Create React app only uses two. And it just makes it look weird in the end if I don't. So I'm going to clean that up so that way it's a little easier to read. The next step is, well, I'm going to run it because I want to make sure that everything works out. So I'm going to say npm start, uh, and it's going to load in my web browser, and hopefully it just shows an image that's spinning around. Perfect. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be looking at React hooks. So we're going to be using use state and use effect. And we're going to use fetch first, and then we're going to use Axios. And then we're going to move on to the older component way to do business with the component did mount and things like that. So let's go ahead and import use state and use effect. And we're going to make use of it. So the first step is we want to create our state variables. Um, so we're going to say constant. We're going to say first name. We're going to say set first name. And we're going to say equals use state. And this is just going to be the default value, which is going to be an empty string. We're not going to default it to any first name. Likewise, we're going to do the same thing for a last name. So we're going to say last name. We're going to say set last name equals use state. And we're going to say, again, empty string. And finally, we're going to say constant. We're going to say website. And we're going to say set website equals use state. And again, we're going to set that as an empty string for the default. Now, when it comes to rendering these items, we're going to do that uh, right below our image. It's going to be nothing fancy, but we're going to say first name and we're going to say last name. And then we're going to create a new paragraph tag and we're going to say website. So that's that's the goal here. And, and right now, because they're empty strings, uh, it's not going to show anything, but it will when we start making our HTTP requests. So let's go ahead and make use of our use effect. So we're going to say use effect. And we're going to tell it what to do. Inside of this use effect, we're basically going to make an HTTP request, get the results, set the, the variables here for first name, last name, and website, and then those will re-render here. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say fetch the URL. Um, so for the URL that we want to use, it's going to be from the HTTP bin.org website. So basically what we're looking at is we're looking at this URL as our kind of primary uh, URL. And then we're going to choose to decide what we want to run. So to start, we're going to say get, um, and we're just going to provide it a bunch of query parameters. And those query parameters are going to come back to us, and we're going to use them. So let's go ahead and check it out. So we're going to say HTTP, HTTP bin.org. We're going to say slash get, and we're going to say first name equals Nick, and last name equals Raboy. Uh, this does return a promise. So what we want to do is we want to say then response, response.json. And then we want to say then. And uh, what we want to do inside the second then is because of how HTTP, HTTP bit, 
I can't even say it, because of how httbin.org returns the data, uh, the data that we want, which is the, the first name and last name, it comes back in an args field. We basically only want that field. It's going to return a lot of other stuff back to us, but it's just not interesting for us. So we're going to say response, and we're going to say response.args. Now, that's the data that we want to use. So now we want to actually use it. So we're going to chain another promise um, event together. So we're going to say then. And there's numerous ways that you can handle this inside the use effect. But uh, chaining promises for this example is enough for us. But I'm going to call it result this time. The naming convention doesn't matter. Um, but what we want to do is we want to say something along the lines of set first name. This is going to be result.firstName. We want to say set last name result dot uh, last name and we didn't provide it a, a website so we're going to ignore it for now and I'm gonna save it and hopefully if we've done everything correctly if I go back to my browser hopefully it says my first name and last name and it does so this uh, Nick Raboy was actually received so it was consumed from that API I mean we did send it that but uh, like I said HTTP bin just sends back what we send it so that's coming from the API um, so let's take a look at Axios this time. So let's look at an alternative way to make HTTP requests. Um, it's at, at the end of the day, it's going to be preference more than anything. There's there's a ton of other ways you can make HTTP requests. Uh, I personally prefer the Axios way, but it's totally up to you. So let's go ahead and stop our application. What we want to say is we want to say npm install Axios hyphen hyphen save. All right, so that command finished. Uh, let's go ahead and import Axios at the top. So let's go ahead and say import Axios from Axios. And we're going to comment out the fetch. And we're going to say something along the lines of Axios. We're going to provide it a set of options. So the first option is the method. Instead of a get request this time, let's go ahead and do a post request. So instead of doing query parameters, we're going to do a, a request body or a payload. We're going to say URL. It's going to be HTTP, HTTP bin.org slash post. And let's look at that payload. So let's go ahead and say data. And we're going to provide it a website. So for now, uh, we won't use the first name and last name just so that way we can see the differences. But I will add first name and last name in just a moment. So Axios, along with fetch, does return a promise as well. So let's go ahead and, and play around with that. So we're going to say, um, and my tabs are going to be a little weird, but let's just go ahead and say then. We're going to say response. Response.data is what Axios pulls back. And the data that we want is going to be inside of the JSON field. Once we have that, let's do the same thing we did previously and create a result. And uh, what we want to do in that result is we want to say set website and that's going to be result dot website so i'm going to save it and hopefully all we see is the website now so i'll refresh it can't be reached because i forgot to run it so i'm going to say npm start and uh, it made that request with axios and uh, this time it only got the uh, website so let's go ahead and just uh, for, for the sanity's sake, let's go ahead and say set first name, and that's going to be result.firstName, as well as set last name, and that's going to be result.lastName. I'm going to save it. I'm going to go back into the browser, refresh it. Oh, it's not working out. So let's, uh, we've, we've actually forgot something. We forgot to actually set it in the payload here. Um, so let's go ahead and say first name is going to be Nick, and then the last name is going to be boy so I save it this time it should work out because I'm sending it in as part of the payload here and then I'm setting it um, inside of the the result so I'm gonna go back refresh oh it already did it for me so it has my first name and my last name um, so let's just review this real quick before I start looking at the component way to do business um, but we saw two different ways the first way um, included a fetch so fetch is part of modern JavaScript um, it's I think it's relatively new um, it never used to exist um, but it does return a promise and it can be much more complex than the way I used it 
there's also Axios, uh, which is my personal preference, uh, both of which I go into more detail in another blog post that I wrote uh, when it comes to just HTTP requests with JavaScript in general. Um, so just search over the Polyglot developer if you're interested in seeing that example. Uh, but we used use effect to issue the commands. Uh, we stored the results in the state. Um, these are both using React hooks and we rendered them uh, inside of our HTML. Uh, so let's let's take a step back. Let's go through the component way to do business. I understand that as of now, uh, not all organizations have switched over to React hooks, which is fine. Um, so we're, we're just gonna see it both ways now. Um, and rather than scrapping this whole project, we're just going to kind of pick and pull. Um, and we're gonna start by creating a class. So we're gonna say class app, and this is going to uh, extends react.component. So we're just changing how we're doing business. Um, so now we do need functions in here. Um, so starting with the HTML, uh, this is going to actually be a render function. So let's wrap that return in the render. So that looks good so far. We scroll up here. Um, so the state, state, state variables are a little different. So that's gonna be in the constructor. So this is gonna be super, and this is gonna be this.state equals, and this is going to be an object, and this is just old old school way of doing React. Um, I don't think there's a wrong way to do it. It's just your preference. I think uh, hooks though are definitely, definitely more relevant nowadays. But we're gonna say uh, first name, this is going to be empty string, last name, empty string, uh, and then um, website, it's going to be empty string. So that means that we can now remove uh, these right here with the, with the use state. Um, so that's one thing gone. Uh, let's go ahead and remove the use state because we're no longer using it. Now when it comes to um, using these state variables inside of our renderer, uh, we do have to use this now. So this.state.firstName, this.state.lastName, and then this.state.website. Um, so that's, that's all in business. Now we have to worry about this use effect. Um, so instead of use effect, we do have to make use of component did mount. So inside of the component did mount, we can basically transfer um, all of this code. So I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna remove the, the use effect right here because we're not using it anymore. And um, let's, let's go ahead and try it out. We're gonna, we're gonna start with uh, the Axios way to do business. Uh, we do have to scrap what we have here um, and use it the component way of doing business or the, the React state variables. Um, so we're going to say this.setState. Um, we provide it what we're setting. And uh, we're actually setting the first name. And this is going to be result.firstName. Last name is going to be result.lastName. And then website is going to be result.website. Um, so I saved it. I'm going to remove this comment here. Save it. Uh, let's go back into um, our browser. And it looks like uh, everything's still working, uh, which is good. So I can go back into my code. Um, I'm no longer using use effect here, um, which is good. I'm no longer using uh, render, so I can remove that. It got rid of all of our errors. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it the fetch way, which again isn't going to be uh, too far off of what we've already done, um, but just, just so that way it's clear and obvious uh, between the, the React hooks and, and this way. Um, so I uncommented fetch. I do want to comment out uh, these two set first name, set last name, because it's not how we do business in this example. Um, so we say this.setState. Uh, we're saying we want to set the first name is going to be result.firstName. And then last name is going to be result.lastName. Um, so that means that I can remove these two lines. I can save it, and hopefully um, when I go back into my browser, it just says Nick Raboy because we're not passing it a website. Um, so I see that Axios is, is, we're seeing a warning here. That's because we've commented out the usage of Axios. But just to go over this again, uh, we switched over to using a React component. Um, so if we wanted to use state variables, uh, we have to use a constructor. Uh, instead of using the use effect, uh, so for React hooks, we have to use component did mount. 
Um, how we set the state variables is slightly different from what we saw with React hooks, which is fine. Uh, and then inside the render function, uh, we how we r render those variables on the screen is slightly different as well. Uh, but the bulk of what I wanted to prove here is, you know, it's not it's not difficult to interact with an API. Um, an API is those things are used pretty much for every modern web application. So to to be able to consume from them is definitely a skill that you have to know. Um, but it wasn't difficult, and we saw two ways. Like I said, there's probably a hundred other ways that you could do this as well. Uh, but this should get you started and comfortable uh, with React. If you enjoyed this video on YouTube, uh, it would mean a lot to me if you gave it a thumbs up and even possibly said something nice in the comments. Um, definitely appreciate that kind of stuff. But regardless, thanks for watching.